Hey Beta Climbers, Josh here. So I'm planning on building my kids a loft. And I, 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 there's, they kind of look like this here, but all of them have stairs and ladders, which kids could fall off of. And I thought it'd be really cool if I built like an elevator or something. And I got thinking and I started planning things up and uh, just playing with pulleys and stuff. And I invented something and then I realized it's already been invented. But I thought it'd be really cool to share with you guys because you all like ropes and pulleys, right? That's why I subscribe to this channel. So uh, it kind of goes like this. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna draw anything ever again on this channel because <laughs> you guys hate that. So I built a model, and uh, you, you can't ignore a guy that builds a model, right? So uh, let's get started. Right. So what this is is just a piece of a dowel that's uh, with two nails holding it. So it's acting kind of like a pulley. Okay. So here's the problem. Here's the issue with uh, the elevator I want to build. Cause I want it to, I don't, I don't want it so that the kid has to pull up their own weight. And then when they let go, the, the, they fall down. For instance, we have our little kid here, right? Strapped to his, strapped to his little elevator. Let's tie a little knot on here. Okay. So, if this kid was to pull himself up like this, if he was pulling himself up, it would actually be a two to one because he, half his weight would be on this rope. And since he's pulling on this, he's loading this rope. So he's actually giving himself some mechanical advantage, especially if there's a pulley up here, just a little tidbit. Anyway, that's why if you ever throw a rope over a tree or something like that, you noticed uh, it's a little bit easier to pull yourself up. But if your friend tries to pull you up, that it's harder for him, but it's easier for you because you're only pulling half your weight. He's pulling your total load. So I'm pulling all the weight here. And if he pulled it, then he'd be pulling half his weight. Okay. Anyway, we're definitely going to be learning something today. So if the kid pulls himself up and then let's go, boom, hits the ground. How do we solve this issue? Okay. So, so I started playing with it and so I started uh, messing around with it. And if you add loops around a dowel or something, or you add loops around anything, what you're doing is you're adding friction. Every time there's a loop that goes around this dowel, you're adding friction. He's no longer falling. That's if the dowel doesn't move. If the pulley moves, he's gonna fall down. But you have to realize that the more loops you have here, the harder it is to pull this. And in fact, if you have maybe like six or something loops or more, you could pull on this till this falls down and breaks or the rope breaks. That's how powerful friction is. So I started messing with that. And so how do you stop him from falling here? Okay. So what if you did this? Okay. So basically, if we start pulling on this now like this, it gets wound it up. But as soon as we let go, it still falls down, you see? But what if the pull was on this side of the dowel? So this side of the dowel is getting pulled down and this side of the dowel is getting pulled down at the same time. Then we can't get any spin because we're pulling down on the back of the dowel and we're pulling down on the front of the dowel, how's the dowel gonna turn if it has equal weight pulling on both sides? So if we wind this side up like this, and then we also wind this side up like this, so it's got counter turn, one's going clockwise and one's going counterclockwise. Like so, even when, even though this is wound up, we're not falling down because both sides of the dowels. So right now we've solved one issue. We're not falling down. But the problem here is even when we move this pulley back and forth, we're not going up. We are staying still, but we're not going up. How do we solve, how do we get to go up and down? Well, this little thing comes into play. So let me set this thing up. 
Damn it. Okay, well, don't mind this mess over here because I had a bunch of extra line. But basically, now we have the line, the weight on this side, on this small dowel, and the weight on this big dowel. So as the rope transfers onto the bigger dowel, it takes up more rope than what's on the smaller dowel. But since the weight is on both this side and that side, when we let go, we don't go anywhere. We stay right there. So that's called science. <laughs> so it's science, kids. So if we added, let's say another rope over here, if we put another pulley or something over here, right? Like this, and this the only thing this did was to make the dowel spin or whatever, and we just pulled on this, we could wind that thing up and we could wind it down. And we could fall off into this section and create a huge mess. All right. So, as this feeds up on here, we're getting upward progress because we're eating up more rope on the left and less rope on the side. And then as we go down, we're eating up less rope over here and letting out more rope on this side. That's pretty cool. So I hope you understand that. Now there's actually another version of this that you can do. And I'll show you that real quick if I could set it up. Okay, so this version, this setup is called a differential pulley. So now what we're doing is we're just making one continuous line, one continuous loop. It's all one loop. And as I pull on this end, my loop is getting longer and that load is going up. And then I pull on this end, my loop is getting shorter and that load is going down. So that's the way that whole thing works. And of course there's some calculations that have to do with pie. I don't know why mathematicians like pie so much. I like, I like pumpkin pie. <laughs> Sorry, I broke character there for a second. But anyway, the calculations, I'm not gonna bore you with them, but obviously you have to do with what the radius is, what the size of this uh, side of the dowel or pulley or whatever the shiv you use on this side and what size it is on this side. And the, I, don't, I haven't really figured out the ratios on what the mechanical advantage would be, how hard it would be, what the load is. I haven't gotten there yet. If that gets you excited, then hit, if I see a bunch of subs and likes, then I'll definitely uh, show you how I build this and upscale this so I could get my kids to pull themselves up to the loft. If you want to see the loft build, definitely let me know. Comment down below and uh, like and subscribe on this video and, uh, and I'll do it. I'll, it's, it's so hard to build stuff and videotape at the same time, but I enjoy doing it, especially if you guys like it. So uh, let me know, comment down below and uh, I think that about wraps up. I hope you learned something and I hope this was easier to digest than my drawings. God forbid I ever make a drawing again in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, so that about wraps it up. And uh, I guess I'll see you next week. Josh Perry, climbing out of here. <laughs>